Welcome to the Generation Elevation Podcast, a conscious, connected platform for those who are ready to manifest their dream life. I'm your host, Elise Riley, a former PT, now motivational speaker, igniting empowerment and transformation all across the globe. Here at Generation Elevation, we are committed to bringing you the most inspiring guests who will share their stories, wisdom, and advice to help you progress closer to living a life of your own terms. The people that you meet in your life are fate. Whether you've known them for a short while or your entire life, everyone that is in your awareness is there for a reason. Your parents, your partner, friends and loved ones and even the person that you happen to walk past down the street this morning. Even that person whom you probably don't know their name. Everyone that you meet that is in your world, in your vicinity, they are all there to teach you something, to share with you lessons and learnings that will help expand your consciousness and therefore help you to evolve to the person that you were put on this earth to be, your highest self. Now, this does not exclude the people that trigger you the most and who maybe you don't really like. These people teach us the most powerful lessons. And so in today's episode, my intention is that you will walk away looking at these more difficult relationships differently and more so curious about what these people are actually teaching you. And you will also walk away with more of an openness and this openness will help you be more connected in your current relationships that you already have. I'm going to be sharing my personal experiences from meeting people from all walks of life across the globe and how by being open, by eliminating my projections and assumptions, how this has then birthed the most beautiful relationships with people that I could have missed if I stayed closed. If you're new here to my show, I just wanted to say welcome to the Generation Elevation podcast. It is a pleasure to have you. And if you are an OG listener, I also send my love and gratitude to you as well because Without you guys, this show wouldn't exist. And so I'm very grateful to have you all here with me today. Now, I wanted to start off by talking about parents, okay? Because we all are put into this world with parents, most of us, I hope. So for me, my personal belief is that we are souls. We're spiritual beings having a human experience. Now, I have visions consistently of what this kind of world looks like. But for now, I'm going to just keep it super simple and easy to digest for everyone listening. But I believe as a soul, we choose the main life themes that we have as we are born into this world, into earth. We choose the main theme. So whether your theme for your life is self-love or gratitude or humility or joy or love, whatever your theme is, you will most likely be able to figure this out by looking at the breadcrumbs of your life. If you look back on your life and see the similar themes that you've had throughout, This most likely has been your soul's mission or one of the biggest learning pieces that your soul has come here to transmute and to learn and to use to grow. So for me, a lot of the themes from my life have been about speaking my truth, about around educating, sharing love, abundance, and one of the biggest things would be self-love and 
looking after my body and teaching others how to do that. That's always been the theme is this health and fitness and well-being side and sharing my energy with you all. So having a look at those lessons that you have learned, they'll all have very similar themes. Now, I believe as a soul, we choose the theme and we also choose our parents. Now, this may not make sense to a lot of people, but I believe that we choose our parents based off what their souls have been contracted to earth to learn and who they are then will help shape us to who we are born to be. So you might think, well, why would I choose my parents? Because right now, like I've had the worst relationship with my parents. So why would I choose them? You might be thinking that, right? But if you look at those lessons that you learn in those hardships with your family, you probably wouldn't be the human that you are today and therefore unable to do what your soul has chose you to be here to do. So you would not be able to live out your mission as a soul if you didn't have those hard times with your parents in the past. So if you're thinking, oh, you know, I wish I had it easier. I had a terrible relationship with my father or my mother. And why would I choose that? It's because it's about what they taught you in those hard times. And you can either be a victim to that and go, poor me, or you can turn that victim mentality into victor mentality and go, hang on, without those hard times, I wouldn't have learned this and then I wouldn't be able to share this. Without those hard times, I wouldn't be me. And so if you look at those experiences, it was all actually perfect. For myself personally, I have had a really blessed upbringing I have had a beautiful relationship with my family and at the same time, they have also had their own lessons that have then I, in my lifetime, had to learn as well. And therefore, when I have children in the future, they will choose me based off what I haven't healed and then most likely heal that. So it's very ancestral. And this is a lot of the work that I do with clients is about healing your lineage and the limiting beliefs that have been passed down through the generations to you. Okay. It is your responsibility in this life to do the best that you can to become aware of what has held your entire lineage back so that you can change it and create a better timeline for future generations to come. So you choose your parents. They will be some of your biggest teachers in life, okay? They will teach you, obviously, from the imprint age of zero to seven, you will be very much copying their mannerisms, the way that they speak, their energy, their emotions, the way that they react. And then from the ages of seven to 14, the way that they speak, their accents, lingo, et cetera, This will be the ages where you'll copy a lot of their patterns and how they cope with stress as well is a big important one. So if you look at yourself as an adult now and the way that you cope with stress, it's most likely that your parents also did similar things as well. Okay, so our parents will be some of our biggest teachers in life, not just for teaching you how to write and how to read and how to be a general person in society, but also they will teach you so many other things about yourself, especially when you start to do this personal development work and you start to understand that a lot of your patterns and behaviors and the way that you see yourself in the world will be similar to the way your parents did. So from my lineage, especially on the feminine side, it's a lot of uh, negative body image that I have had to transmute and heal for myself. So for me, in my past, I've always been really self-critical. And that's because I've watched the females in my ancestors do that and criticize themselves and their body. So therefore, for me, I also did the same until I started working on my mindset and stopped doing that. There'll be times where I will do that, but it's not as much as it used to be in the past. Now, 
I mentioned at the start, a season, a lifetime, they're all here for a reason. A reason, a season, a lifetime is the same. So your loved ones. Let's talk about intimate partners that you meet because these people will be some of your biggest mirrors. So whether you are in a long-term committed relationship or whether you're dating right now or not at all, the people that you meet and have that closeness with will teach you so much because they are your mirror at where you are at at this current point in life. So their fears, their doubts, their insecurities are most likely going to be very similar to your own. They will shine on you the most amazing light and love because they're showing you all the beautiful things about yourself. They will share with you all the goodness, right? But they will also shine light on your shadows, the parts of you that maybe you repress and deny and reject. Your partner will trigger the heck out of those things. And all of a sudden, what you've tried to hide and deny for years comes up, boom, then and there in the moment. And that's why a lot of people can get quite reactive and stressed out in intimate relationships is because they are so triggering because they bring up all of your stuff that you have not dealt with or you thought that you just pushed to the side and it would stay there right? It's like trapping an angry gorilla in your basement and thinking that it's never going to escape or get upset because it's been down there thinking, oh, well, because it's down in the basement, I just never have to go to the basement and it'll be fine. But no, there's still an angry gorilla in your basement that you haven't dealt with, right? Imagine if someone comes over and they get lost and they just go to the basement and go, what's down here? Open it up. An angry gorilla. That is literally what relationships are like. So if you find that relationships for you and dating, et cetera, have been really triggering or you keep getting ghosted or you just keep coming up with blocks and barriers, these people are all showing you where you're ghosting yourself, where you're not loving yourself, where you're not giving attention to yourself, where you're treating yourself like shit, right? If you truly love and accept who you are, if you truly love you, then the people around you will also do that too. If you're saying really kind and loving things to yourself, you wake up in the morning and you you say hello to you and you say, oh my God, I look amazing today. I'm so grateful for my body. I feel good. I feel happy to be alive. I look beautiful. I'm so grateful for the way that I look. I'm so proud of myself then you most likely will attract people in your experience that will speak to you like this as well because you wouldn't settle for anything less than how you treat yourself. However, if your partner is not treating you the way that you want them to, if they're saying nasty things to you, if they're not telling you that you look amazing in the morning or if they're not like initiating intimacy, then ask yourself, where am I not initiating intimacy with myself? Where am I not speaking to myself kindly? Where am I not doing this? Because they are just showing you what you're not doing, okay? They are just speaking out loud, most likely the things that you are saying to yourself. So if you've got a negative self-talk going on in your head, then this is what you will get from the people around you. Same with colleagues and then same with friends. The people in your experience, right, on that level will just share with you what you're already thinking in your mind. So if you are generally a positive person, you'll probably attract positive people. But if, let's say, you keep seeing this coworker that's always down in the dumps, they may be just reflecting a version of you that feels rejected or feels left out or unseen. So how can you go up to that person and just initiate a conversation and go, actually, like, I didn't even get your name. What's your name? And help that person feel heard and seen. Because by just going a year at your workplace and not even knowing that person's name, right, you're completely ignoring them. It's not a very, like, positive environment to be. You want to create almost like a family culture in the place that you work. 
So these are all the types of people that you would most likely click with, right? But then we have our enemies, for lack of a better word, right? Our people that we really would rather not spend time with. And it's easy to go, yeah, I'm just going to avoid that person and it's all good. But the truth is, if you do not learn the lesson that that person's trying to teach you, you will keep attracting that same type of person your entire life. So let's say, just an easy example, someone that is emotionally unavailable and you're trying to date and they you just keep getting cheated on. If you do not forgive and accept and learn the lesson that that person has tried to teach you unconsciously, then you'll probably keep attracting that type of human or relationship into your life until you actually get it, right? If we're projecting anger and distrust out to the world, you're just going to manifest more of that. So how can you look at these hard times and potentially betrayals or awful experiences that people have done to you and ask yourself, how has this happened for me? I know it's hard. I know you don't want to do that. You're like, oh, the last person I want to forgive is them. I don't want to forgive them. And that's okay. This stuff does take time and practice. But ask yourself, how did that situation, how did that relationship happen for me? What did I learn? And what do I now know about myself moving forward? Life is all about learning. And so whether you're happening to be stuck in a road rage or someone says something really awful to you at work or your family says something that is really passive aggressive or you have a hard breakup or a friendship breakup, whatever that is, a social media personality that you just can't stand. Ask yourself, what is that thing about them that you can't stand? And get curious. Why is that triggering you so much? What's the emotion that is coming up here? Is it anger? Is it sadness? Is it fear? What are they doing that you're not doing? What are they doing that is making you question yourself and your own ideas and morals? When we bring up the topic of religion, right? At the dinner table, it can get heated. Why does it get heated? Because people get triggered that your belief might not equal my belief. So therefore you're against me. Oh, if you don't believe in my religion, then therefore we're at war. We're going to be in a fight. You don't believe me. You're against me. And therefore you're not on my side. But this doesn't have to be the case. Everyone is entitled to have their own beliefs, right? You choose the beliefs that serve you and only you. That's okay. But that doesn't mean everyone else has to believe what you believe to be on your side. You can still love and care about another person, even though they have different beliefs. By trying to convince and persuade someone to believe what you believe, you're asking them to walk away from the things that have served them most likely their entire life. And for most people, that feels like an attack. So next time these topics of conversation come up, whether it be in the dinner table or in the lunchroom or wherever you are, how can you just stay open? Open to connecting with another person and hearing their beliefs To be in a conversation where you go, wow, that's a really interesting perspective and I appreciate you sharing your beliefs with me. It makes me feel like you really trust me from what you have to say. For me personally, I have different beliefs to you. But that doesn't mean that what your experience is untrue. For me, I believe differently. Imagine if conversations were dictated in that way and facilitated where everyone had that sort of communicative awareness. It would be so different and there'd be a lot less arguments at the dinner table, that's for sure. And lastly, 
I wanted to encourage you when you are just crossing throughout the street, walking about in a club, (laughs) in a restaurant, in a cafe, in a supermarket, wherever you are. And let's say you just catch eyes with someone. And this doesn't have to be related to any sort of sexual connotation. You just accidentally catch eyes with someone. Just think about the synchronicity in that. Out of every single person in this world, you happen to walk past that human at that specific time and catch eyes with them at the exact same time. Like, what are the chances of that? And so my belief, after reading the Celestine Prophecy, which is a beautiful book, my belief is that when you catch eyes with someone or when you are near someone, you're most likely going to have something in common, a similar belief. Potentially, they have something for you, a message. It could just be some words of support or encouragement or an idea. I also believe that sometimes the universe gives your ideas to other people so they communicate them to you. Because sometimes we struggle to listen to our own messages come through on us by ourselves. So if you catch eyes with someone or if you're in the line waiting for your coffee and you just kind of smile at someone, awesome, how are you today? What's your coffee order? Oh, what are you training at the gym today? I see you in here all the time. Are you training for anything? What do you do outside of work? I always see you in here. Like, what are your hobbies? Strike up conversations with these people and you would be so surprised at the magic that then comes from this. Literally, I was in the gym. I asked a girl, I'm like, oh my gosh, I love your set. It looks amazing. You look so great. And now we catch up for walks all the time. I'm actually wearing her brand right now. So it's Lazuli, by the way. People like this, I would have missed out on if I didn't open up the conversation. If I didn't have this belief that everyone in my reality that I bump into has some sort of message or there is some sort of link that I need to know about there. For example, when I was getting my hair done a while ago, I overheard a conversation. I was like, wow, that is an incredible conversation. I want to interview this guy for my podcast. And turns out he was the owner of the hair salon, Valentino, who I've had on my show. And I'm actually recording out of his studio right now. Like what is a beautiful synchronicity of that? Or I was reading a book in Battersea Park and I overheard two guys talking about manifestation. My book was on manifestation. So then I went up to these two guys and I said, hey, I don't mean to be rude, but I overheard you talking about manifestation and I love what you're saying. I'm literally reading this book. And I made two new friends from that experience. So always trust in your unconscious mind to lead you to those types of people. You'll be led to the people that will share with you exactly what you need to know for the next step in your journey. And it's easy to assume, it's easy to assume that they are on their phone, they don't want to talk to anyone or they've got headphones in so they know what they're doing in the gym and they don't need me to bother them. Oh, that's weird, right? It's easy to assume that, oh, no one likes that person or this person told me that that specific colleague at work is mean so I should assume that I don't talk to them because I don't want that energy in my life, right? It's easy to assume and have bias around certain people. When you actually put that away and put that aside, you'll find that you'll meet some of your greatest friends and potentially lovers, right? You will meet some incredible people and magic will happen. So I encourage you to get out there today and be open to the people that you cross paths with because the people that you meet are fate. Thank you for being a part of the Generation Elevation community. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to leave a five-star rating, written review, share, and tag me on Instagram at elise.riley. Until next time, keep loving, keep learning, and keep rising.